Hello, 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 everyone. Um, so I said I would be doing a true crime case along with the other video. I'm probably gonna put that one first and then this one, but that is why I'm still in my jumper that's actually um, making me sweat crazily, even though it's raining out. Now, so as I said, I would also be doing a true crime video and this case actually doesn't take place uh, in Ireland. It's not an Irish crime. So I thought for a bit of fun, what I would also do is look at some cases that involve Irish people abroad or that have some sort of connection to Ireland. So this first case takes place in 1967 in Rochester in New York. And it involves the 31 year old Joseph Michael Maloney, his wife, 27 year old June, and they had two kids together. However, in March of that year, after what is said to be five years of emotional and physical abuse, June leaves with the children. So she confides in a friend, Neil Dunkelberg, what a name, that he, you know, he was quite, I think more kind of like manipulative and stuff like that and threatening. She said, although he never like hit her, side point, physical abuse or even other abuses, not just like punches, but that he would like grab her and like sh and yell at her and shake her and stuff. So it was quite intimidating. Neil Dunkelberg would actually say like, quote, his Irish flaring temper. Not sure how I feel about that stereotype. So she left. June and the two kids moved into an apartment and uh, Joe is what he went by. He stayed in the house. So only weeks after this, he actually visited the family friend, Neil, who... From what I gather, lived at home, like lived with his mother and, you know, other family. And he was like an amateur chemist is what they say. So he had like his own little lab down in the basement. And basically Joe tells Neil that there's a dog who keeps like going through his rubbish and stuff like that, you know, in the cans. And that he wanted to poison the dog. But that the owner was like a police officer. So he was kind of afraid and he needed something like that wouldn't be traced back to him and stuff like that. And so straight away, he became interested in a liquid that was clear, odourless, tasteless. And if consumed in the right amounts, is right the correct word there, um, it could be lethal. But anyway, Joe left. And Neil became weary of his story. He, you know, he kind of just didn't think that it, it sounded right. So he put an extra lock on the door outside the house that led into the basement. And he also told his family that no one under any circumstances was to be allowed into the um, basement. And he explicitly said, Joe is not to be allowed into the basement. However, another couple of weeks pass and Neil and his family are away on holiday. And it appears that his younger sister must have stayed at home and or else she was over to, to house sit for them. And unfortunately, Joe uh, sweet talked himself into the basement. He told her that he needed to like sanitize some tools or something like that. So she must have just let him in. Um, there's like an Unsolved Mysteries um, episode for this and it makes it sound like, it makes it seem like he takes it, it takes the liquid in front of her like, and he's like, oh yeah. And she's kind of like, I don't know about this. And he's like, no, no, it'll be fine, all this. Whereas, from reading about it, it makes it sound more like he, he kind of tricks her into thinking, no, I have to run down and just, I need to sanitize something or do whatever. And that she wasn't actually there watching him take whatever. And what he took is called methanol, or it's also known as wood alcohol. And I said already, it is odorless, tasteless, clear, and it can be lethal if given in the specific doses. So on May 27th, 1967 then, Joe holds a birthday party at the house for his son's fifth birthday. So I don't know if it was kind of that they were supposed to be doing it together or was he just hosting it, but it was in the in the family home, let's say. Maybe they just thought it would be nicer for the child, you know, especially when parents divorce and stuff, sometimes things like that might help ease the transition. It is said that June stayed for about two hours and that she had um, gotten along with Joe and that he had offered her a drink and stuff like this. And while at the party, she found her friend Wanda Mordenga. The names in this are just cool. And Wanda says that she sounded a bit like wound up or something. There was something going on. And so she said to her, like, how much have you had to drink? And she said, oh, I only, I've only had two drinks. 
Um, and then that was it. So then when she went home, Wanda called over. Again, the impression I get is that Wanda actually lived in the same apartment building. And so she called over. But June said that she wasn't feeling well and she was just going to go straight to bed. Now, the following day, again, like the way it makes a sound is Wanda like finds Joe and a doctor in the hall of May outside May's apartment. So I got the impression it was because Wanda was also in living in the apartment. So that's how she obviously came across them. But again, maybe she had just come to visit again. So the doctor was saying that it was food poisoning. Anyway, Wanda went in to see June. Joe was very like, no, like you can't see her. She's not, you know, up for it. And the doctor says kind of like, no, yeah, it's fine. So she went in and that June asked her to stay. And it is said that the two of them are talking. And then all of a sudden, June stops talking and kind of looks scared. And when Wanda looks, Joe is standing in the doorway listening to them. So then like that, um, she doesn't want to be, she basically says like she doesn't want to be left alone with him. And he's getting annoyed at Wanda saying like, you need to leave and stuff like this. But like June says like no no I'd like her to stay and then tries to get rid of him by saying like if you want to help will you go get will you go out and get me like a cola or something unfortunately the next day June fell into a coma doctors could seem to find no reason for her um health deteriorating Wanda was so upset but it seems that Joe was just unfazed by the whole thing in fact um Joe started to tell the doctors that she hadn't been well. She hadn't taken the separation very well. She was suffering from depression, this type of thing. And basically indicated or implied that she had tried to take her life. The doctors, however, did find this kind of suspicious that he was giving this information because there was no signs to indicate she had tried to attempt to take her life. Sadly, June died on the 5th of June. The autopsy would find a lethal dose of methanol in her system. Joe was arrested, like no one was falling for his lies. So he was arrested and charged with first degree murder. And so he actually requested, against the advice of his lawyer, to be committed to the Rochester Mental Hospital to undergo a psychiatric valuation. And so uh, the judge agreed. Unfortunately, no one seemed to be aware of the fact that Joe used to work as a janitor in the hospital. So he knew the layout of the, the place and somehow he managed to get it. It says a copy of the key. I don't know how he would have managed to actually physically get a copy. But he obviously just got a key, I'm, I'm guessing. And on the 25th of September, 1967, less than two weeks since being committed to the hospital, Joe escaped. And that was it. He was gone. That is until August 1973, Dublin. Gardy called to a home of a burglary of Michael O'Shea, who was a barman in Dublin. And so they're obviously doing investigating and they start taking fingerprints of the home and they ask Michael for his fingerprints, you know, for like elimination purposes, standard. So he says yes. They submitted all the fingerprints and the Gardaí were shocked when an Interpol notification came back that one of the fingerprints belonged to Joseph Michael Maloney, who was wanted for murder. Now, unfortunately, at the time, there was no like extradition agreement between the US and Ireland. So they couldn't do anything about it. Joe or Michael O'Shea insisted that he was not who they said he was. And unfortunately, like that, he had no record, criminal record in Ireland. So there was nothing they could do but wait until over a decade later. An extradition agreement was then put in place between the two countries. And on the January 7th, 1985, Michael O'Shea slash Joseph Michael Maloney, was arrested. He was held in Mountjoy Prison for 14 months, and here he also tried to escape twice. He refused to cooperate at all with authorities, and he refused to allow his face to be photographed. So the only photo that they have is from his original 1967 mugshot. However, he was identified in court by a former neighbour and retired detective, George Rees. In November 1985, the extradition order was put through for him to be sent back. Unfortunately, however, in January 1986, the Supreme Court overruled the extradition order due to a legal technicality or error, and Joe walked free. The following year, in February 1987, the order was ratified and the extradition order was put back in place. However, there was no trace of Joe Michael at this time. He had simply disappeared. 
I just want to point out though that he was a barman who was married with like he was married again with more kids. So like there's no mention of his new family kind of if they if he literally just abandoned them, although he tried to I mean he abandoned his last kids, so why not abandon more? But there's no kind of follow up on that. And sadly there's no update on his children with June. Like they obviously then basically essentially both became orphans. If Joe is still alive today, he would be in his late eighties. He has red hair, blue eyes with a scar over his right eyebrow, and he is six foot two. He is apparently a demolitions expert, and they believe that he could be either in Canada or still in Ireland with links. He apparently had links to the IRA, so they believe they might have helped him go underground, either here or again like that in Canada or somewhere. So that is a story of Joseph Michael Maloney. So yeah, that was the first of the kind of international crimes I saw, I suppose. Um, yeah, like you'd feel bad obviously for the Irish family here that he probably had to abandon, but like his poor kids were, you know, their mother was murdered and their dad fled. Even the fact that your, your father murdered your mother. Yeah, so let me think, let me think, let me know what you think of the case. And if you would like to see kind of more of these cases where there is an aspect of Ireland or where it's Irish people in other parts of the world. Um, as always, if you have any case suggestions, let me know. Please keep safe. Have a good week and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.